This entitled customer is making an outrageous accusation against this phone company, claiming they changed his phone's ringtone. But he's not done yet. Now he's demanding something ridiculous, even though the company didn't do anything wrong. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, and on with the revamped show. I work on the sales floor of a supermarket in the UK. My job is to answer my phone whenever a colleague calls me for whatever reason, and just to generally keep the checkout and self-scan areas tidy. So among my travels around the store, I get a lot of angry customers, unhappy returns, and I'm asked so many times to call my manager down. I practically have her on speed dial at this point. So on this day, I'm on the front desk selling cigarettes, lottery tickets, and scratch cards. Thankfully, one of the more easy jobs. Now it's important to mention at this point that our store, and many other stores in the UK, use a Think25 policy when selling alcohol or age-restricted products. Which means that if someone flags up an age-restricted item at the checkout, you have to assess if they look younger than 25 years of age. If there's a shred of doubt in your mind that they might not be 25 or older, it's always safer to ask for their ID. Mystery shoppers tend to try and catch colleagues out on this. So, as it turns out, one of my colleagues sold alcohol to one of these mystery shoppers a couple of days ago without asking for ID, and resulted in all checkout colleagues to fill out a Think25 quiz sheet to make sure we all know the rules. So with this information very fresh in my mind, I'm very aware of clocking people's age on this particular day. The next two people in my queue are Polish lady and her male friend. PL walks up to the kiosk desk wearing a KFC uniform, looking well under the age of 25. That's a red flag for me, as many people in our area take up first jobs at McDonald's or KFC as a first job out of high school. No problem, as long as she has her ID there's no issue. Hello, what can I get for you? I'd like a number 3, 7 and 12 scratch cards. That's fine, have you got ID with you? She then gives me this look like I've just taken my pants down and pooped on the desk right in front of her. A mixture of mortified shock and unbridled rage. What? Are you kidding me? I'm sorry ma'am, it's our store policy to ask for ID if you don't look 25. But I'm 18! I understand that, but you need some form of ID to prove that to me, before I can sell you anything. She then proceeds to get out a photo of her passport on her phone and shove it in my face. There! Happy now? Unfortunately ma'am, we need a physical form of ID, to make sure it's not a fake, and that the photos look similar. I won't be able to accept a photo of your passport as ID. But the police in Poland accept it's just fine! This is ridiculous! But we're not the Polish police. I simply won't be able to sell you these scratch cards without a physical form of ID. PL then storms off, cursing obscenities in Polish, while me and everyone else in the queue is in unanimous shock at what just happened. MF then comes up to the kiosk next, who I knew she was with, and proceeds to ask for the exact same scratch card numbers. I stand there in disbelief for a second at how short this man thinks my memory must be. Sir, I'm not selling you these scratch cards, they're obviously for your friend. He is cheery enough about it and understands, then proceeds to leave. I figured that was the end of that, and continued serving customers. PL then storms back in, pushing past customers in the queue, and practically fires lasers out of her eyeballs at my name badge, making an audible, mm-hmm, and walks out of the store again. Weird, maybe I should let security know about this lady so he can keep an eye on her. Not a second after I decide to walk up to security, she comes back into the store with the confidence of a thousand sons. She bravely thunders up to me at the desk and asks me to call my manager down with the smuggest grin on her face. Face. I say, absolutely, no problem, and smile back with the knowledge I've done nothing wrong. Both my manager and another manager from a different department come down and ask this lady what's the matter. This man is refusing to sell me scratch cards because I'm Polish. My smile quickly turns into a look of confusion as the front desk queue proceeds to metaphorically set up their chairs and get out their popcorn. Is this true? Absolutely not. The lady did not look 25 to me, so I asked her for ID and she didn't have any on her, so I didn't allow the sale. PL then whips out the photo of her passport and states that she has it right here. My manager then gives me a look as if to say, oh, it's one of these customers. My manager then calmly reiterated that the store policy needs a physical ID, blah blah blah. I want this man fired! He said no to my friend who is clearly over 25, surely this isn't acceptable? My manager then explains what a proxy sale is and how that isn't allowed either. 
This is just discrimination. I'm 18. I'm old enough to buy them. Just because I'm Polish, he's not selling them to me? How could you hire someone so incompetent? Our security guard then comes over and says that she will have to leave as she's causing a scene and definitely not getting her scratch cards now. Her entire demeanor changes after she sees the big security on his jacket. Oh, okay, sure, no worries. She then leaves the store and a half with our security guard. I take a few deep breaths and return to the desk. The next gentleman I serve is chuckling away to himself and I ask how I can help. He then asks me for a 3, 7 and 12. I place my head in my hands and laugh as he bursts into hysterics. You know what would have been crazy? If those numbers actually would have won. And it's not like she couldn't have got the scratch card. She just needed to keep a form of physical ID on her. Don't most people usually carry around a form of physical ID? There's a number of reasons why you might need to. Purchasing items where you need to be over 18 or 21, being one of them. So this was about a year, maybe more so ago, but I was just reminded of this as I listened to the old style video call from a video. You know that high pitched twiddly <laughs> I'm not sure how that's done. So yeah, I used to sell mobile phones for a particular brand in the UK. This brand in particular seemed to attract a certain type of character. I'm at the front of the store, not too busy, and lo and behold, an angry customer, AC, beelines for me. This is how that conversation went. AC with an angry tone. I suppose your company believe it's right to alter my settings in my phone, do you? Me thinking it's probably a software update. Ah, sometimes things can change on there. If you pass me the phone, I'll have a look and see what's happened. What? No, you don't need to see my phone. You need to stop messing with my settings on my phone and actually let me use it. He does this weird smile as if to laugh in my face, but not quite making it there. What gives you the right to change my settings? Settings. Well, the manufacturers usually release software updates over time to help with performance of the phone. I haven't had a software update. I have seen my phone trying to do that, but I won't allow it. What I'm saying to you is to not alter my settings. By now, I'm a little bewildered, and it's clear this guy is pretty much shouty yell, not giving a chance to actually help him. So, can I just ask then what has actually changed? He takes his phone and goes on to video call, rings a name on there, and places the phone in front of me. It's making that low pitched ring tone, and he keeps staring at me the whole time. What is that? How are you meant to hear that? Well, I get what you're saying, it's not that loud, and AC interrupting. You see, you admit it. It wasn't the best idea, was it? So now when I get a call or even ring out, I cannot hear it. And the whole point of a phone, I'm sure you young ones won't know this, as you've been brought up with this technology. I'm a 33 year old male with a baby face, at the time probably 31. He was starting to go light grey over his dark grey, so probably 40s or 50s. So why have you changed my phone so it would no longer provide me with the service I was guaranteed to have? Well this is something you will have to take up with the manufacturer as we only provide the service, but can repair or replace if the phone is faulty. AC stares at me mouth open for a second. Sorry? I have to go to the manufa- You sold me this phone in good faith. Now I'm telling you that you have changed my settings, you are passing the blame? Well we don't change any settings on the phone. So what do I pay for? I spend over 40 pounds a month and you feel you can change my settings. It's not good enough. At this point, nothing I explained to him is getting through to the fact that a Newark has no control over how the manufacturers will update phones or change settings, etc. Because I couldn't put his settings right in the store. Also because I took another new phone out and set it up, he could hear the change he suddenly demands a full refund. Thankfully as I had recently just stepped back from management position to the sales, I could explain to the manager on duty what was going on. It was kinda nice seeing cocky new management buckle under an angry customer after giving me grief previously for stepping down, but afterwards we laughed about it and I don't work there anymore. The guy didn't get any refund and I don't know if he ever contacted the manufacturers to complain, but never heard back from it again. Just love unreasonable customers and happy to look back at being retail free for almost a year now. Very few people actually have positive stories about working in retail. Usually the most enjoyable bit is the people you're working with, or perhaps the store that you're at, so if you like the equipment that you're selling, maybe it's something you have a passion for. I know every job you have to deal with people to some extent, but for some reason retail seems to bring the most entitled annoying people into it. And that's usually your job, all day long, is to deal with them. 
Hi everyone, I actually have a story to tell on here. This happened recently and honestly, it's kind of frustrating how the customer acted. The cast is Jinx, me, Richard, customer, not the actual name, Mr, manager, minor role. So here we were, glorious weekend shift, where rushes happen more and you can probably get decent tips when you're working inside. It was about three or two hours before my shift ended. A call started to come in and I was the one to pick it up. Hi, this is Food Chain, this is Jinx, how can I help you tonight? Richard told me his name and I looked up his info. Good, now we're set to order. So he wanted one of our specials, a three topping deal for a specific pizza. I was a bit confused at first since it was pickup only, but we had the same deal for only two toppings. I told Richard this and he started to say, what? I don't know why no one told me about this until now. I explained it again and once again he said the same thing. So I decided to just go ahead as it's the order and do two topping deal. We got the pizza done and it's what he wanted. And I told him the order with the coupon. Then I told him the price and he piped up and said, it's that much? I repeated the price and heard him laughing a bit like he thinks I was joking. No, I wanna use my customer coupon on this. All right, not a problem at all. I placed it on and all that was left was the delivery charge. All he had to do was pay the delivery and boom, free pizza for him. All right, sir. It'll be about 326 for delivery then. Would you like to pay with cash or card? I asked him. Hand lightly hovered towards one of the options. Richard started in with the questions as soon as he heard the price. Why do I gotta pay 326 now? Did you not use the coupon? He asked me. I don't know why it did, but his tone just set me off a bit. But I still kept up my customer tone. Well sir, with your coupon it covers your pizza, but it doesn't cover the delivery charge. Once again he laughed a bit and ended up saying, You must be new there. Is Mr. there? Now, Mr. is the only one Richard likes. It's mostly due to the fact that Richard knows Mr. would have taken off the charge, but Mr. wasn't there. Just me and two other managers. No sir, Mr. is not here at the moment, but I'll have another manager look this over. One second please. I placed my hand over the phone and called one of my managers on shift. She noticed the name and started to check it. She ended up telling me, just like I thought, that he needed to pay delivery. I took my hand off from the phone and told the man the information. I don't fully remember what he said, pretty sure it was that he was going to wait for Mr. and hung up. We didn't know if he still wanted the order, so we cancelled it. The thing is, the order he made was around $17, so just paying $3.26 for that sounds like a good deal in truth. I can understand if he was in a tight spot and couldn't, but it was honestly rude how he acted. You know, he probably wasted more than $3.26 of his time just trying to work around and complain about this stupid coupon. If he just paid the delivery fee, he would have got a free pizza. I'm guessing he can't use that coupon anywhere else, so I mean, that's the best deal you're going to get. What, does he just go around in life and unless he gets everything 100% free, he just rejects the offer completely? Like, nope, 90% off isn't good enough. It's 100% or I'm gonna starve and die. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.